Welcome back to my 30 day Zwift challenge. This is episode three. If you haven't seen episodes one and two, then they're linked down in the description. Be sure to go and check them out. But to summarize really briefly, I was set the challenge of riding every day on Zwift for 30 days to see what happens. And now, well, there's only 10 days left, which I'm pretty gutted about because I've been absolutely loving this challenge so far. But we've got a lot of fun things planned for this episode. I'm gonna be doing my first Zwift race, which I'm very excited about. And obviously there's the final FTP test to find out how much of a performance gain I've managed to accrue from this past month riding on Zwift. Today though, I've had a little care package come through the post, so we're going to bust it open, we're going to see what's inside, and then we're going to get today's session underway. Ooh, very nice, got some very nice uh, Zwift water bottles in there. Ah oh, yes, a big old training mat, this. It's gonna be great actually, I've really need one of those. Got some funky sweatbands, very cool. And a lovely little Zwift t-shirt, gorgeous. So there we go, it's all set up. I think it looks really good. It looks way cleaner than it did before. It's just a really nice, simple setup. It's amazing what a map can do, actually. I think it's also gonna help just with a little bit of the vibrations, which would be nice. And I don't need to get sweat all over my form, which is fantastic. So anyway, now that that's set up, I'm gonna crack on with work. Um, but this evening, I'll be jumping on the turbo and we'll get day 21 underway. I'm excited, I'm very excited for it. So today, Zwift have sorted me out with something pretty special to kick off episode three. They have given me a sneak peek into the brand new Pro Team Training Camp workouts. Now, they are back and they are bigger than ever before. They encompass more teams, there's more workouts, and today I'm doing one from the man, the myth, legend, Garen Thomas from the Ineos Grandiers. So um, we're gonna get stuck into the session. It looks pretty good. It's really nice to see that Zwift are continuing to build on the success of the previous versions and uh, making them even bigger and better. This session today um, is basically gonna get progressively harder. Um, it's gonna be intense, but that's probably how you become a pro but I'm not one to speak. One thing that I really love about the protein training camps is that it kind of gives you a bit of a peek behind the curtain as to uh, what the pros do, and it kind of lets you engage with teams in a new way. And now that they've built in more teams than there were previously, um, with even more riders, yeah, you can really start to um, yeah, see what they get up to. Yeah, registration for the protein training camps is already open and um, the workouts go live early December as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's a great time to get involved with them. They're, they're a lot of fun. But yeah, like I say, we're gonna get stuck in today's session. The Garen Thomas, it's gonna be a tough one, but it should be good. Wow, what a session. That was really fun actually. I'll tell you something that has also worked incredibly well. This headband, I have not had a single bead of sweat roll down my face. Although I can feel this is very sweaty, but that means it's done its job. But yeah, I'll tell you, that was, that was a banging little session. And it's day 20, oh my goodness. Did you hear that? That was so loud. Well, day 23, there's quite a lot of rain, thunder and lightning going on outside at the moment. So um, yeah, there was no chance I was gonna be riding outdoors. If you haven't seen the hollow replay before, it's a function which shows you a visual representation of your previous effort over a time segment. This can either be your PR, your most recent, or both, or you can turn the function off altogether. So really, it's now easier than ever to gauge the effort needed to set a new PR. Day 
24 is in the bag. I've just been rolling around the roads, to be honest. I didn't really have too much of a plan. I just decided, you know what, let's just get onto Mercury Islands and um, just have a bit of a tear up. It was nice just to kind of rip around, not have to worry too much and just explore the place, which is really nice. I definitely tried to put in some like longer digs um, at kind of well above FTP to really get the legs going. Yeah, no, I felt good, to be honest. It was just what I needed. A bit of just stress-free riding, blow off some steam at the end of the day of work and uh, yeah, just be a bit more chilled out about it. So enjoy today, have a rest day tomorrow, probably with a pace partner, just keep it a bit of chill. Um, and then, yeah, on Wednesday, there's the Cycling Weekly 10 mile TT. So we'll do that. But yeah, I feel like this is a good lead in now to the final week. So we'll see what happens. But now, same as usual, time for dinner and a shower. Spot on. So it's day 25. Um, today, after yesterday's session, which actually left my legs a little bit sore than I was expecting, I'm just having a nice, relaxed recovery session. I'm using one of the pace partners just to help me kind of not go too hard and just spin around the island. I think that's what I needed today was just a bit of a chill one. Busy day at work, so it's nice just to kind of switch off for a bit, immerse myself in the gameplay and just chill out because I think that's all I really need tonight. And um, hopefully a rest ride today is gonna help me for tomorrow's Cycling Weekly 10 mile TT. So yeah, that should be good. Um, but for now, just gonna keep on spinning. So while we're waiting here on the start line, we're just gonna spin the legs out actually. I think it's gonna be a pretty uh, full gas effort off the gun. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be okay. I have no idea what to expect, to be honest. Um, there are, there's over 100 people now. I think looking at the chat, uh, I'm led to believe that it's gonna be a mass start, but with no drafting. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, we're in the front group. So, oh, there are some people disappearing down the road. We're over halfway through. We've got three and a half miles left. If anything, this effort has taught me that I might need a bit more rest before the final FTP test. I think one thing that's holding me back at the moment is just that accumulated fatigue. I can definitely feel it in my legs now. Um, so I think I just need to make sure that I'm extra prepared and relaxed and stretched out for, for Sunday. I think on the final climb I should be able to take a couple of people off. There's just under a mile left. I think I can break top 50. Here we go, time for the big ring. There he is, top 49. Oh, we just caught someone. Yes, come on. Ah, so close. Oh, oh. 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 We came 48. Oh, it's not bad that one. I mean, yeah. That was a good bit of fun, though. I quite like that. It definitely fires up the creative part of you. But I think that kind of goes to show why having clubs on Zwift is so good. It's just because you can kind of see all your mates and a whole bunch of people that you might not know. It just creates a nice community, doesn't it? You know, you can set a club up really easily. So if you wanted to move your, your shop ride onto, the, uh, onto Zwift, it's really easy to do that. And um, yeah, you can chat to your mates. It's just a nice social way of keeping cycling going when maybe people don't want to be outside, which is more than understandable. And uh, yeah, it just means that cycling continues to be a social sport, which is really nice. It's day 27. Uh, that means including today's session, there's only three sessions left before the final FTP. So we've really got to, well, I've really got to start thinking about this carefully. But today I have penned in a Zwift race and I was planning on taking on one of the Z racing events because 
the reason why they looked really good was because they were all designed to be done in under an hour and they've got category enforcement, meaning that you're going to be racing against other people that are of the same watts per kilo as you. So you're going to be amongst people that are a correct level of competition as it were. So it keeps it quite fair um, and means that actually you can really get stuck into the racing which is really nice. So that's what we were going to do today. However, when I got on the bike today and I started pedaling my legs, they were not feeling good. They were feeling quite bad, to be honest. It's this massive training load that I've put on myself. Obviously, this is why we don't recommend anybody do this many days in a row. Like Matt Heyman said in the last episode, just take it easy. We've done the hard work. We now need to let all of that sink in. I need to make sure I'm fueling right, sleeping right, and just rest up as much as possible. And yeah, just keep the legs moving in, at a really low intensity. So that's the plan for today. I think what I will do is do a bit of reading on the Zwift uh, website, um, because they've got some information about um, racing and racing on Zwift and how to best tackle it, especially for newbies like myself. Um, but it's really good because there's, there's a lot of information in there um, about how to use your power-ups and um, kind of surfing in the virtual bunch. So there's a lot of good information in there, which I think I need to be clued up upon because I think after Sunday, and once I've done my final FTP test, I think the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is actually get involved in one of these Z racing events. So I'm gonna read up, educate myself, and then hopefully I'll be nice and ready for a Zwift race very soon after this challenge. So it's day 28 and that means we're only a couple of days out now from the final, final FTP test. Um, but it also means the recovery is incredibly important at the moment. So today I'm going to chat to Imogen Cotter, who's turned into a bit of an expert around recovery after something that happened to her earlier this year. So we're going to get her on a call and we're going to find out what that's all about. First up, I think the, one of the most important things um, for those that aren't aware, Imogen, is just run us through what happened at the beginning of the year and um, what kind of the, the background to the story is of your recovery. My introduction into cycling was pretty, it, it wasn't typical. You know, I started very late. I was 25 when I did my first road race and, uh, you know, everything I had worked for years, everything had kind of culminated in at the end of last year, I won the national champs and I got a pro contract, which was what like, it was just a dream. And I made the move out to Girona and, you know, that was also incredible because I wanted to live here for a long time. And I was living here for three weeks when I was out on a training ride. Um, you know, that week I'd done all my testing, hit like my best numbers ever. And, you know, I was just excited to race for, for a professional team for the first time. Um, and I was hit by a car uh, at the end of January. So uh, yeah, in like a split second, the driver overtook a cyclist and he continued driving on my side of the road and hit me head on. And basically, yeah, it, it, it was a, the beginning of like what I naively thought at the time. You know, I remember being like, I'm gonna be back out on my bike in a month like I really was not willing to accept how serious my injuries were and how bad it it could be um you know but I couldn't walk properly for like three months basically I ended up having to get five surgeries so far this year um two on my knee and three on my wrist and yeah I suppose it, in a huge way like Zwift plays, played a massive role for me in that because at the beginning I couldn't cycle obviously outdoors um I was three and a half months indoors, I think. The first time I cycled outdoors was at the beginning of May. So I was indoors a lot. I was cycling with one leg. You know, I couldn't do a, I couldn't do a normal pedal stroke with my injured knee because I had broken my knee, ruptured my tendon and broken both bones in my wrist. So it was a lot. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I guess I... I was cycling with one leg indoors on the turbo um, and then after all of my surgeries this year I've been using um, the Zwift, like Swift and the turbo just to make it a bit more bearable like it felt like I was very isolated from the cycling community and having something like Zwift where I could you know arrange a group ride and actually ride with other cyclists made me feel a bit less isolated 
which is quite nice. So actually, in the run-up to when you won um, the national championships and you got that pro contract, were you using Zwift then as well to kind of get some really dialed in training sessions sorted? Um, was it much, was it a big part of yeah. that kind of build up? In, in 2021, I made it onto the Movistar E team. Um, so that was like, a, through a series of racing, I got onto the Movistar E team and all throughout the year I had been doing racing with them. So, uh, you know, anybody who's raced on Zwift will know that it's just like absolutely full gas from the gun. It teaches you like a level of pain tolerance and a level of suffering that I think you can't get anywhere else and it was really uh i think that made me a better athlete because i became not like so afraid of the pain when i would be in a race outdoors i would think okay yeah this is hurting but when i've been indoors and i've i've done this i've survived you know um so yeah that was it was it's definitely played a part in last year me just developing as as an athlete um yeah i've used Zwift a lot throughout everything like in my cycling career so far um anytime i've been injured when there was covid to to improve my training my zone five training yeah I've, i use it a lot across a lot of different areas anything else about zwift that you think has been really valuable or would you say racing and the community is absolutely top tier yeah racing in the community for me has been what's top tier. but you know what's really nice i have to say sometimes now i'll be like riding on zwift and somebody who's followed my story who's seen my story will just pop up like a little um a little message being hey imogen keep going like it's incredible to see i just be like oh my god like every time i see it i'm always like i get emotional when i see it i'm like this is so incredible because where on earth would you have that like that doesn't exist on any other like training platform so it's really sweet a really nice part of like yeah the fact that i've shared my story it, things like that make it really worth it um because it's just you know i sometimes i have been on zwift and i've been thinking oh i'm i'm not great like my legs aren't there my head is maybe a bit you know gone because i've been through a lot of surgeries or whatever and then i'll get this little message pop up and i think oh my god like that's actually lovely you know well here we are Day 29, or FTP Eve as I'm calling it. I guess, thinking about it now, riding every single day on Zwift, it's obviously never really gonna be recommended to do. And actually finding balance is a lot more important. But what it has taught me, actually, that it is easier than I thought to find 45 minutes a day to get a Zwift session in and actually just get some consistent riding going because being consistent is obviously going to help me and anyone kind of reach a consistent level of form, which is really nice. Yeah, today we're just spinning around Watopia. Um, I'm just going to take it really easy, kind of zone two, just more active recovery. Um, the legs are feeling in a good spot, so I think tomorrow we should be in a good place to... Um, yeah, hopefully push some big numbers, we'll see. I mean, whether I hit my target tomorrow or not, you know, it'd be really nice, but the fact is, I can just keep going until I do hit it. So, um, you know, I think that's a, that's a nice way to be thinking about things. It's maybe quite calm about tomorrow, actually, which is nice. But yeah, today's all about rest and taking it easy. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Here we are then, day 30. Um, I am pretty much ready to get this FTP underway now. Um, I'm all nicely cooled down. I've got an ice vest on at the moment to help keep my core nice and cool. Um, I've got my drinks ready, laptop set up. I'm ready to go. I'm feeling good about it. Um, I think my legs are in a good place. I'm gonna do the FTP shorter version, which you can find on Zwift. I just find that that 40 minute mark works quite well for me. There are absolutely loads of ways to test yourself on Zwift from really kind of qu quick ramp tests all the way up to like a long version of the FTP test. So. Um, there's, you know, there's something out there for everyone basically, but I find that 40 minute one works quite well for me. Uh, it gives me a nice 20 minutes or so to open the legs up and then the 20 minutes to really lay down the power. So, um, yeah, there's nothing else really to do now. Um, I think we jump on the bike, we get going and we see what happens. Okay, so the warm up is nearly done now. We've got about a minute and a half of kind of just spinning the legs until the effort starts. Who knows what's gonna happen. Okay, 
There's one minute left. Oh, we're so close. Ah. Final 30 seconds. Here we go. Three, two, one. Ah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Ah. Ah. 262 watts. I've added 32 watts to my FTP in a month. Oh. Wow, we that is day 30 complete. The challenge is over. 30 watts over where I started the month. I am um, I'm really happy actually. That's more than I could have wished to achieve, and it was a. Uh, it was, it was easier than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, especially because it was done on Zwift. There was so much to do, whether it was structured workouts, exploring the maps, riding with friends, racing. There was just so much, and it feels like I don't even really get to scratch the surface. Um, there's just so much stuff there. And the Zwift Hub, that was epic as well. It was just set it up and forget about it. It was really quiet, really simple to use, and it was the perfect thing to do this challenge on, really. Um, so yeah, I... <laughs> To be honest, I'm gonna get back on the trainer tomorrow and just kind of keep spinning legs out. Obviously, I won't be riding every single day now. I'll probably do kind of four or five times a week because um, that is a, a nice level of balance and kind of builds in that rest and recuperation that everybody needs. Um, but yeah, absolutely loved it. If you have enjoyed this video and this series, then drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and I'll see you all very, very soon.